Ready to break free from algorithms, vanity PR, and money-sucking ads? My name's Larissa Worstiak, and I've learned in eight years of jewelry marketing that content is the crown jewel. My agency, Joy Joya, takes a holistic approach, leading with laser-focused storytelling, impactful content creation, and strategic content distribution. This method has worked for the solopreneur as well as the multi-million dollar company, And now I'm sharing the same systems and tactics with you. Here's to standing out in the sea of sparkle. Welcome to episode 305. Today, I'm diving into a topic that's incredibly important, but often overlooked. The most common email marketing mistakes jewelry brands make and how to avoid them. Trust me when I say that email marketing is one of the most powerful tools you have in your marketing toolkit, and if you've built a list of loyal customers, no matter what size that list may be, and they love your brand, email marketing can be your secret weapon and pay off in a big way over time if you're consistent with it and following the best practices. So how do you avoid the common missteps that can keep your emails from being as effective as they should be? Don't worry, I've got you covered because today I'm going to break down the biggest email marketing mistakes that I see time and again, and I'll explain how to turn them around. Whether you're new to email marketing or just looking to improve, this episode is packed with tips to keep your list engaged and your email strategy strong. And in the gold mine segment, I talk about the difference between wanting to be part of the outcome as a business owner and leader versus wanting to be, or at least willing to be part of the process as a business owner and how even though being part of the process is not as glamorous as being part of the outcome, why it's so important to try to embrace that process and really enjoy the journey while you're on it. But before we get to the solid gold, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both audio and video, so you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. You can always support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Also, if you didn't know, I co-host another podcast called Success with Jewelry with my friend Liz Kantner, who's also a jewelry marketer and the founder of the Stay Gold Collective. We have a free version of the podcast and that's available everywhere you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube. And we do have a membership community with extended episodes and additional resources. Also, if you haven't taken advantage yet, don't forget to sign up for your free month of Joy Deck. You can visit myjoydeck.com slash trial to claim your complimentary 30 days. And that link is in the show notes as well. With our new jewelry marketing support platform, Joy Deck, we're dedicated to helping emerging jewelry brands reach new heights. If you're that brand that's just on the brink of something big, but you need guidance to take that step and bridge that gap, you've come to the right place. Our platform is reserved for the bold, the dreamers, and those hungry for growth. Joy Deck is not just another marketing platform. It's a gateway to success for jewelry entrepreneurs who are ready to hustle. We handpick members based on their promise and dedication to growth. So if you're tired of the status quo and crave accountability and industry-specific expertise, this is for you. Again, visit myjoydeck.com slash trial to claim your 30 days. All right, let's get into today's episode, my sparklers. This one's all about the most common mistakes I see jewelry brands making with email marketing so that you can avoid them and protect your sender reputation over time. So why is email marketing so important, you ask? Well, if you've built a decent list of customers and they love your brand, whether they've purchased from you already or not, that list can keep paying off in a really big way. I want to share a quick example for you. So we recently started working with a client. They have a pretty dedicated but not huge email list of about 2,700 subscribers. Life got busy for the client. They hadn't sent any emails in about six months. 
But then we, when we took over with the very first campaign that we sent after that break, they made a pretty decent sale within an hour of that email going out. And that's with the subscribers not being engaged for six months. And that just tells you that your fans are ready and waiting. And we see the power of email marketing firsthand again and again and again. And in our experience with jewelry brands, nothing else in marketing compares right now in terms of that direct impact. So how can you navigate email marketing without making the most common mistakes? And how can you keep building great relationships with your subscribers and stay top of mind? And hey, as always, no judgment if you're doing any of these things right now. They're not gonna make or break your business. And the good news is you can always course correct and improve your email marketing approach. So let's dive in and start making your emails even better. All right, so mistake number one, really common. Maintaining multiple lists instead of one list with multiple segments is a super common mistake that I see often. And a lot of times the reason this happens is like, maybe you're going out and doing events or you're doing giveaways. And for each of those things, you're creating a new list to kind of keep those contacts separate. It totally makes sense why people do that. But there's also a lot of confusion in email marketing around how to properly use lists versus segments. The only real reason that you should have more than one list is if you have two entirely different groups of customers who need completely different messaging. Like, for example, a list of retail customers, and a list of wholesale customers. But if you're basically just using email marketing to speak to your retail customers, they should all be on one list. And if you do want to break them down by characteristics like where you met them, where they live, what they've purchased, what they've browsed, or any other kind of characteristics, that's actually great and encouraged but that should happen with segments. And that's where segments come in. And those are typically managed either by tags that you're assigning to each subscriber or automatically by behavior that's tracked by your email marketing provider, especially, for example, if Klaviyo is synced with Shopify. So again, why is this so important and why am I harping on this? I've seen so much confusion and messiness where there are too many lists in the person's email marketing account, and it becomes really difficult to see how lists are performing and who is or isn't engaging. It also can really complicate things like when you're trying to set up automations or flows, and then even sending campaigns can turn into a real headache. When you're trying to figure out, oh my gosh, all the different lists I need to send to and not being consistent with that over time, basically you just lose control over the whole process and make things way harder than it needs to be. So get your lists organized and maintain one central list. Mistake number two that I see so much, if you do have that one list or even if you have a few Not regularly cleaning your list is a really big mistake. Your email marketing list is not a set it and forget it thing. People will lose interest. Their email addresses will change. Or maybe they're just not buying at the moment and their priorities have changed. And that's why it's so important to make sure regularly that the majority of people on your list actually wants to be there and wants to hear from you. And that can be kind of a painful pill to swallow because we all know it can be difficult to grow that list in the first place. So why would you want to regularly clean it and get rid of people? But it's so, so important. And I have done an episode about this, about list health and how having disengaged people can really damage your deliverability and make sure that you end up in spam folders, which you do not want. So anyway, 
To clean your list for the first time, you want to create a segment of disengaged contacts. These are usually people, it can really vary, but they've received at least five emails from you, but they've never opened and they've never clicked any emails. There are a lot of different approaches to setting up this segment. It kind of depends on how often you're sending your email, when you last clean your list, or when you last sent an email. Also, if you haven't sent an email in like six months, you may want to start getting consistent first before you decide who is disengaged. But once you have that disengaged segment, you basically send them an email, ask them if they still want to be on the list. And if they don't engage at that point, it's time to get rid of them. Goodbye. So then you archive or suppress those content contacts. You can also automate this process by setting up a flow that captures those disengaged people as they enter the disengaged segment. And that way you don't have to worry about doing this every 60, 90, however many days, and they automatically get suppressed or archived. So that's another thing to consider. Okay, mistake number three, being afraid of quote unquote bothering your customers. You should be emailing your list at least once a week. Seriously, that's not too often. I talk to so many jewelry business owners who worry about annoying their subscribers, but having this mindset is actually working against you. It's kind of contradictory, but you need to email often to make sure you're not bothering your list. Doesn't make sense, right? (laughs) But here's why. So if you want to keep your email list healthy and effective, you need to be consistent and you need to be frequent. Because the less you email, the more you risk losing engagement, and then your emails will just become less and less effective over time. People will forget about you, and then they will become annoyed when you do send very infrequently. And if people unsubscribe, let them unsubscribe. I want to put that on a t-shirt or something. If they stop engaging, let them stop engaging. That's okay, too then you would follow the steps I mentioned in the previous tip about cleaning your list. If you're worried about being too pushy, focus on creating more interesting, story-driven content so it's not all about selling all the time. And that's why having and sticking to a content calendar is so important. And if you're having a big launch, event, promotion, Then you have to email even more often than you think. Once per day, maybe multiple times per day. I'm telling you, don't be afraid of it. Most people miss most emails. And so if you want your marketing to work, you cannot be shy or scared or nervous or hesitant about it. I am giving you the power and permission right now to email often. Okay, mistake number four that I see very commonly. The mistake is treating your email like it's a work of art and being too picky about the design. Here's something many jewelry business owners don't realize. You could spend hours crafting the quote unquote perfect email design, but there are very high chances that it won't look exactly the same in each one of your subscribers' inboxes. In fact, most people will see it differently from how you saw it and intended it to look. Why is that? Fonts render differently in various email platforms. Some people use dark mode on their phones. Emails are viewed on different devices and certain email providers don't even load images properly. It's a whole mess and you simply cannot account for all of these variables. So you cannot be too precious about the design. Of course, you want to do your best to have your email capture and reflect your brand and generally look good, but it's more important that it's clear and effective and communicating the most important information. 
immediately. So be sure to test it on both mobile and desktop. Maybe send it to a friend or a colleague for a quick check. Aim for visually pleasing and functional without stressing over making it a masterpiece. And then lastly, mistake number five, and that is putting the calls to action or CTAs and the most important information too far down in the email. A common mistake I see is burying the most important details way, way down in the email, and I just don't understand it. You have to realize that most people glance at an email, usually just at the top part without even scrolling, for a few seconds before they decide whether or not they want to engage with it or ignore it. So if the key information is not at the very top, your readers will more than likely lose interest before they even get to your main point or or message. And then what's the result of that? They either delete it, they ignore it, or they just leave it on red. To avoid this, make sure your email captures attention right away. So start with a strong headline or hook that speaks directly to your audience's needs or curiosity and place that primary call to action like a shop now button or a special offer close to the top where it's immediately visible and follow it up with any supporting information or visuals that lead your reader further into the email just in case they do want to look at it more. Remember, people's inboxes are flooded daily. I'm sure you don't look at every email that comes into your inbox, or if you do, you probably look at it for a second. So you need to grab attention quickly, make it easy for your subscribers to take action. Avoid the temptation also to overload the top of the email with fluff. Just get straight to the point. And by keeping your call to action and key details up front, you'll increase the likelihood that readers will engage and follow through on your message. So what do you think? Did you learn about some mistakes or missteps that you might be making with your email marketing? Do you have a new perspective? Let me know in a comment on YouTube or DM me on Instagram what you think. I'd love to help. Okay, let's get into the gold mine. This is a segment of the podcast where I get personal and share insights on entrepreneurship, mindset, success, growth, all things business. And this week, I want to take a moment to talk about the difference between being part of the outcome and being part of the process. And this was inspired by a meme I saw recently on Reddit, a business meme. So it's you know, a little more corporate, but it really hit home. It was a bar chart and it had two bars. One bar was really tall and labeled people who want to be part of the outcome. And the other bar was really short and was labeled people who want to be part of the process. And this is so, so true, especially in business. So many of us out there are big dreamers, especially if we're creatives. We can envision those amazing outcomes in ways that some other people cannot even wrap their head around. You can clearly see the finish line. You have a grand vision of what you want to create, what you want your business to become. But there's a much smaller group of people who also can embrace the process, the sometimes messy, difficult, and unglamorous part that makes those outcomes, those dreams possible, turns them into reality. And the truth is, unless you have a lot of resources, aka money, to pay others to handle the process for you, The outcome is not going to magically happen no matter how many times you wish on a star. And it's definitely not going to happen overnight, even if you have lots of money to pay people to be part of the process. The process is hard. It's rarely straightforward. It involves learning curves. It involves 
grit, it involves dedication, it may push you out of your comfort zone. Actually, scratch that. It will push you out of your comfort zone if you're doing it right. It will take longer than you expect, and it's going to test you with many, many roadblocks. But it is the only path to achieving that amazing outcome that you were able to dream of. And I get it. Being part of the process is not fun. It's just not. But it could be if you change your mindset. Here's something to remember. The process is where the real magic happens. It's where you grow. It's where you learn. It's where you evolve. It's where you have the quiet revelations that aren't like Instagram ready or like viral, have viral potential on social media because they're small. They're those breakthroughs that you have, those moments of discovery that are hard to communicate to other people. And the outcome that comes from that process, that's just the icing on the cake. So if you're finding yourself frustrated with that nitty gritty part of building your business, whether it's carving out time to work on your marketing, getting the courage to try something new, or just sticking with that day-to-day grind, try to embrace the process. See it as the real reward rather than getting stuck on this big picture idea of where you want to end up. Because that could take a real long time and you might be waiting while you have the chance to be really embracing the present, the process. So be willing to be that doer, even if it's not your natural tendency. Dive in, get your hands dirty, just get started. You may even discover that the outcome that you had imagined, this amazing dream, this amazing end, the the thing that you are trying to create, maybe that's not even the one that's meant for you. And maybe through this process, there's something better that you'll uncover that you could never have imagined. That's pretty cool. What do you think about that? What can you be doing to be part of the process? Let me know in an Instagram DM or YouTube comment. If you want to reach out, you can always email me, Larissa, that's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com. And if you love this podcast, please share it with a friend who'd appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're completely new to digital marketing, you want to purchase and read a copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy, visit joyjoya.com slash book for more information.